Thank you. Thank you. It's funny, my, uh, my, my two brothers and myself are very passionate about what we do. Uh, we are artists. We work as a team. Uh, Chris, Israel, and myself have been doing what we do now for 10 years now. And we're talking backstage about why the three of us aren't here today. And I explained to them that we always argue about what we do passionately. And we all tend to speak over one another. So this morning, um, when I dropped them off at the Fox Theater for the performance, um, <laughs> and I'm, ho I'm hoping that they don't show up any minute, um, that was when we decided who was going to speak today. Uh, so what we're hoping to share with you today is, 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 is our thought that, that art can transform an environment. Uh, it can change who we are. It can change how we feel. It can make us stop and think. Let's start to put the slide to pop in. So what my brothers and I do is we create objects for spaces. We work with blown glass. We work with metal. We work with wood and just about any other media we can be creative with. Uh, the piece that we're going to share with you today is called Three Brains. And essentially, we are given an opportunity to create an environment or an object for an environment for a human space here in Detroit. We've been working in Detroit now, like I said, for 10 years. Um, and this object that we are going to create for this human environment, oddly enough, was not for humans. It was for fish. Our goal was to recreate a coral reef, the essence of a coral reef, out of blown glass. We studied species, colors, the interaction of the reef, oceanic life. We had, did a lot of research on the effects of water on the colors of the glass, as well as motion, texture, and just the general landscape of a coral reef. We started by experimenting with colors and shapes that uh, we would actually immerse in water in an aquarium and kind of look at it to see how the light would change it um, underwater and how it would look as far as its fluency and, 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 and just the general feel of, of each of the species we were going to create, all of which were inspired off of real coral species, except for one I'll explain to you at the end. Through the process, essentially, we realized that our species were going to have to have numbers. And they were going to have to have spacings and groupings, just like you would have inside a normal landscape at your, at, in, in your yard or in your home with flowers. If it was going to feel real, it needed to resemble a real coral reef. We worked with a multitude of shapes when it came to our species and really had to work hard with the colors because when you put the glass in water, the colors become muted somewhat. So every color we chose had to be vivid or when they weren't vivid, we chose them to be more muted for whatever property essentially would be uh, the best effect underwater. Each of the species we created were different. And in, in, in explaining that, um, we really tried to uh, focus in on macro versus micro. And one of the most difficult parts of it was giving the, giving the pieces motion. Uh, when you put it in water, you don't want the uh, the species to look stoic, you want the f them to actually have the motion of water moving around them. Texture was another thing we took into consideration when designing these pieces. And every single species that we develop, um, we try different techniques with our glass. This particular uh, piece that you see here is actually created by blowing a glass ball of blue. And then you'd surround it in clear. And then it gets whilst hot pressed into a mold that creates the ridges around it 
From there, it gets pulled into about an eight foot long, what we call a reed, and then it gets cut into smaller pieces like tiles. These are set on a table, which is called a marver, and then at that point, you, you heat up the pieces as well as your larger piece of glass, and you roll these type of pieces into it. So we, we, every single species we created, in, 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 to, some, to some degree, was an experiment. <clears throat> We started to group the species together to see how they would work. And it's funny how many different times we put this actual reef together. It was probably maybe 40, 45, 50 different times that we dissembled this, uh, the, the overall piece, uh, one piece at a time, and reconstructed it. All the time trying to think how the fish would react inside of it. Uh, you know, some of the things that like you see with this black object over here in your right, um, where the fish could have architecture to swim through. And again, focusing a little bit more on uh, the idea of macro versus micro when you look at some of these smaller pieces connected with the larger pieces. One thing I'd like to note too is we'll talk about color and lighting in, in a little bit. The actual color of, these, of this blue puffer species with the blue and the orange, just remember that because I'll point something out later that we thought was pretty special. The idea of motion, again, touching back to that when we created the reeds to kind of surround the different species of which are our three brains, the placement of them became very critical so we would, we would feel the motion of the currents in the water um, as well as just the general kind of sway that you'd get from, from a real world underwater. Of the 22 different species we created, some were as tall as three feet tall, some were as small as two inches. And what we realized was that by standing back and looking at the piece as an overall object, you get a completely different impression than when you stand a foot from the front of the, the aquarium and you look in and you can see a piece that's two inches tall but still has detail. It's the same way in a coral reef for any of you that have dove. Um, I've found that some of the coolest things that I've seen are actually in a two square foot area where you're kind of in a microcosm of, of, you know, of oceanic life that is sometimes so small that it's hard to see um, versus the architecture of an overall reef that maybe you're looking at a couple hundred feet. So both have attraction and we wanted to bring that thought across inside our art piece. As we started to construct the aquarium, the reef, what we realized is that the that the species started to take life in one another, as they do in any environment. The smaller species wanted to live with the bigger species. They wanted to be a part of each other. They wanted to complement each other. And it was amazing the effect that each of these different species would have on one another when you place them, no different than when you rearrange the furniture in your house. The environment changed you know, as, as we played with it. <clears throat> We had to give the reef density so it would have depth looking into it, as well as swim throughs architecture, and try to get the best result of our color options. As you see with the black and whites playing off the blue puffers, playing off the orange, um, we had to really push the limits as far as what we could do with color and the vibrancy of it, uh, so that once the water entered the tank, that uh, it had that feeling of, of life being alive. The assembly of the tank um, was an interesting process. The uh, folks from Tank actually handled the building of the, the actual tank. Um, we had to take it up on top of an elevator in its location because it wouldn't fit inside the elevator. And it was about a full day process, mm, I would say 12 to 16 hours inside the tank handing in one piece of glass at a time. Another thing to point out too, that for the, I believe it's 140 pieces of glass in the, in, in the overall reef, uh, we probably blew 60% more than that because as we worked in it in a dry situation, the glass is very delicate and pieces would break. Actually, when you're blowing glass, one out of three pieces break on the pipe anyways. So the amount of pieces that went into creating the overall reef was probably double that of what we actually ended up with at the final point of it. 
So pieces went in one at a time, and, and actually, if I can use a laser beam, which they told me not to use a laser beam, but I just used my hand. We had to construct the actual reef around intakes and outtakes for the water, for the filtering system. We actually did three months of studies on the effects of algae on glass and how we could limit that algae without changing the, you know, the overall dynamics and, 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 and the, uh, how do we say, just the, the, the fact that a living environment for fish is going to have algae in it. You can't avoid it. Um, so in building the, the aquarium around the different apparatuses, the day of our install, um, these several different intakes and outtakes that we had arranged in the tank were not in place and we started constructing uh, the overall reef and got about to as far as we are here on the slide and realized that the folks that put the aquarium in, that is the filtering system, had reversed the two pieces that needed to go into the aquarium. So we had to dismantle the entire thing and start again from scratch, reversing the entire aquarium, um, which needless to say was a little bit nerve wracking. <clears throat> At this moment, we had pretty much all of our species in a dry tank, and it was actually a moment of celebration where we could kind of stand back and envision how water was going to change our art piece. I mentioned earlier that all of our species were inspired off of real oceanic life, except for a couple. And my brothers and I had some heated arguments about adding what you see in here as the skull. The office that this sits next to, actually, the uh, conference room is called their war room, and we wanted to do a little bit of, of play off of that. And that was my philosophic uh, justification. Truly, I'm, uh, you know, I think we can all relate to the idea of pirates when we were kids. And the one thing I pointed out to my two brothers in the heated conversation was that I didn't think anybody was going to forget the skull. <laughs> so uh, we created a skull, some cannonballs, and also a hand-blown sword. Uh, that went in the tank for inanimate objects to make it a little fun. <clears throat> I think one of my favorite uh, essences of the tank was the lighting that we set up for it. Um, it's an LED system that recreates the, uh, uh, you know, basically the period of a day. So we have lighting in the morning that's actinic lighting um, that comes, comes on the tank and then naturally after, uh, say, mid-afternoon, it, it phases into halide lighting that gives you the impression of uh, sunbeams coming into the water where you can see the flickers and, and beauty of it. And then at nighttime, which is the coolest effect, and it's not enjoyed that much because it's in an environment where people aren't there when it's that dark at nighttime. Um, but we did sit there for several nights in a row kind of just checking it out. And at night, it's got a moonbeam um, LED system that essentially turns the aquarium completely electric blue. <clears throat> and as we talked earlier, these puffers that were once blue with orange details, we're now white with blue details. So it was amazing to us to find out that the changing of this lighting will be no different than when you're in the ocean at depth. Uh, the deeper you go in water, uh, you lose spectrums of the, of the rainbow. Um, you lose red first and orange and yellow and so on. Um, so when you're at depth, if any of you have dove, if you cut your finger and you're at 80 feet of water, it'll look green. And you'll look at it and say, what is this green? garb coming out of my finger, and it's actually red blood, but the color changes underwater. So the same effect is happening here with the aquarium, which we felt was integral to the fish feeling that this was a truly live coral reef. <clears throat> so at this point, you can see the water in the aquarium, and some of the things that paid off with our, our studying was the effects of water on glass, especially clear glass, are pretty amazing in that you don't see clear glass in water. You see it as almost jelly. It looks like a jellyfish. Um, so when we took pieces and we actually created color, but you can see here this essence of clear, or along the outsides, it would be a place for light to collect and enhance the overall piece, and it would make the piece have more weight, but it was, it was really fun how it kind of gave this idea of almost ghostliness or, or, like I say, like a jellyfish. So it was a three or four day process. It was actually longer than that as far as the, uh, the, the you know, for the putting the fish in the, in the aquarium. Um, but through the time period of the fish being added, uh, we spent quite a few days there just kind of paying attention to their reactions and, you know, how the tank was adapting, how they were adapting. And there was a pivotal mo moment that uh, 
it really, really meant a lot to all of us. Um, I was standing in front of the aquarium <clears throat> with one of my brothers, and right at this point right here, there was what looked to me to be a fish, but I didn't really see it. And I looked again, and I said to my brother, I said, is that a fish? And he said, yeah. And what had happened was the fish had camouflaged itself to look exactly like this orange brain here. And we both kind of stood there for a few minutes with their jaws open looking at this fish before it swam away and just thought that it made us feel as though we had, had either A, succeeded in creating an environment that the fish were enjoying or that the fish were in fact adapting to their environment, which brought us back to the thought of how art can, can transform our environment. So we sat at our studio and we kind of thought, In a way, we're fish in a fishbowl. We have our environments. We fill them in a way that pleases us. But sometimes we fill them in a way that's just sort of learned. Uh, we add objects to our homes, and to our yards, and to our lives that are what is available versus maybe perhaps something that will change our lives or that have effect on our lives and the way we think. <clears throat> We started to think about spaces almost in ourselves the same way that we did the fish and the fish's environment, and that art can transform our aquarium, if you will. Again, it can make us stop and think for a minute. It can make us feel differently. And, and it's something that should be treasured and that we should all you know, try to remind ourselves of. We thought of the various objects in our environments as far as their architecture, tall and small. I was, I was thinking, is everything in my house, you know, it's kind of standard regular height, so I want to have objects that push the height. Um, so the whole concept that art can transform an environment to us was more or less the realization through this project. So my question to you all is, I'd like to leave you with today is just, you know, considering how art, objects in your life, your surroundings can change you and can take you to a new place. Lastly, I'd like to, uh, since my time is over now, lastly, I'd like to, uh, to share with you a video of our creation. Um, and uh, hopefully you all like it as much as uh, we think the fish did.